Okay, uh, thanks for coming. So I'm Ted Eaton, I'm a family practice physician. I work for Kaiser Permanente. I'm based in Washington, D.C., but I work for the Federation of Medical Groups, the eight medical groups of Kaiser Permanente Group Health Cooperative based in Oakland. And so when we were asked, to, when, when I was asked by Jen to come up here and, and I talked to Regina, what can we add to this amazing innovative group, uh, we decided to talk about the value of the patient story and, and how you can use it to innovate. I'll probably use this. So, just as an example, um, Kaiser Permanente is part of the Innovation Learning Network, which their Twitter handle is right there. It's a group of about 20 organizations that are teaching each other how to innovate. I know this, this uh, innovative crowd. In May, we went to Chicago to Gravity Tank, a well known design firm, and we talked about storytelling. At the very end, the very last day, there was this question of should we focus on patient stories? And all of us, at least I said, absolutely. Uh, and the answer, uh, the reason why, is uh, one of the stories we heard was from, I think, Office Max or Staples, and the comment card says, I need to know how this new thing fits into the work that I do. And I think uh, I've seen, I'm sure you've seen many demos, many tech demos, and people do the click, 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 and Aunt Millie's gonna do this and that, and I, and I just say to myself, is Aunt Millie really gonna do that? I don't really know what the story is behind that, and all of you and all the innovators in Health 2.0 want your work to be integrated into healthcare, and I think the challenge is, without the story, it's really hard for people to envision how they do it. And I'll talk about Louise in a second, but she's an example of making the technology work in the flow of healthcare, which if you don't do that, you're not successful. So um, it's a, another little story. Um, did anyone hear about the thing where Virgin America gave away free flights to most the influencers that were in Toronto recently? So Virgin America gave away free flights. They went to cloud.com, and so I wanted to see what my influence score was so I get a free flight. Uh, not very high, but... <laughs> One of my most retweeted tweets is this one from David Sobel. Saw David Sobel and be the originator for me of let's invite a patient to the room to see if we're adding value to their lives. And he told this to me 10 years ago, and I remember this, I was at a Kaiser Permanente meeting, and it just really clicked for me because we, we talk and talk and think about so much about our members, and then we, he said, you know, whenever you don't know what to do, just invite a member in and they'll tell you what the right thing is to do. So ever since then, I try and work it into everything I do. So let me tell the story in two different ways about what we've done with our members. So number one is the story with data. So this is my health manager. It's the website that attaches to the electronic health record of Kaiser Permanente. There are now three million people using it. It's probably the largest personal health record in the world. And there are some of the data. So 43% have signed on for five or more times. 2.5 million emails have been sent to doctors in just the first quarter of 2010. That's probably more emails that have been sent to any other doctor in the United States. Uh, and then a, a big study in health affairs, Landmark actually two weeks ago showed that emailing, email connections to doctors actually resulted in higher quality scores. So the first study of its kind. So that's the data story. Now let me tell you a patient story. And when I tell you this story, I should tell you that one thing that, let's see if this is, one thing that Kaiser Permanente is doing, which is really cool, is they're actually reaching out to patients who are signing HIPAA releases to actually allow us to tell their stories freely. And it's really weird because I talk to them and I blog about them and we're used to protecting them from talking, and it's weird for them to say, no, you can say whatever you want, I want to know my story, which is, they are willing to do that. So I'm gonna show this video, and hopefully the audio will be okay, let's see. My father's 85, my mother's 84. My father has a very complicated health history with diabetes, high blood pressure, He's in congestive heart failure right now. My mother has got some health care issues, but her primary condition right now is dementia. Oh, it's uh, and as, uh, for a uh, family member or sent the other to act on behalf of a uh, patient uh, that is uh, in need of health care. Basically, I handle all their medical needs, whether it's scheduling appointments, taking them to doctor's appointments, ordering medications, keeping track of their medical history, um, checking their lab results, questions to the doctor. I, I use Kaiser's, my health manager, constantly for all their needs. I, I'd be a, up to grief without her being on hand and ready to follow through on whatever I need. So does that tell, tell the story better about how this helps people? And it's actually, if you watch the whole thing, it's a little upsetting because it's great that she's getting all this help, but it's a really difficult job to take care of someone, and um, it's kind of actually moving every time I see it. So 
The other thing I want to say is look for the stores wherever you go. So on the left, Regina Holiday is here. That's the photo that I took with my iPhone in May of 2009. And I was so impressed that this woman brought her husband's medical record and put it on the table. And I just, as a physician, I managed that's a person and what they must be going through right now, what the family must be going through. And then just two days ago, I was in Oakland, California with the KP.org team. And Ann Sherry lifted had this notebook, which kind of looks like that notebook, except each of those pages is a page of the brand new personal health record that's coming out um, this year and next, that Kaiser Permanente is rolling out. And each page has many, many thousands of hours of usability testing, clinician testing, patient testing. And that's actually the solution to the problem that Regina had. So that all of the work that's happening, which all of you are contributing to in the work you do, uh, is making Regina's problem not be a possibility. Um, and I want to point out Louise Liang, who's here, actually was one of the central figures in the completion of Cape Kaiser Permanente's Health Connect rollout. So as of now, none of our hospitals are on paper. None of our medical offices are on paper. All of our new buildings are being built without x-ray file rooms and without medical records rooms. It's all a So uh, I also want to say Kaiser Permanente is not an academic institution. So sometimes people challenge us and say, well, you don't write articles like, like academics do. So it's a big deal when someone like Louise takes time to actually put together uh, writing about the experience. So you're all very fortunate to get the book for free. I paid for it myself. So make sure and say hi. All right. So, in transition, um, just to say, uh, the patient story is really important to everything we do. Um, it's integrated in everything we do. This is a photograph of Regina and Cindy, who's here. And I actually <laughs> took this photograph and put it on the 27th floor of Kaiser Permanente's headquarters in Oakland, California. And I sent an email to my team. Whenever you don't know what to do, read the sign. We're all patients in the end. And I just was there two days ago. It's still there. So, you can find inspiration wherever you are. And with that, I want to bring a real patient in which tells the story even better. <laughs>